role of radiation therapy in uh, melanoma today. It's uh, always a pleasure uh, to lend a hand to uh, AIM for Melanoma, for the AIM for Melanoma Foundation. It is the largest um, of the organizations supporting our cause. And uh, thanks to Iona for hosting us today. Um, let's see, this one. Now, today, my goal today is to explain two things about radiation therapy. Um, one is to sort of talk about some of the mysteries of radiation therapy, and then the other one is to show you how radiation therapy fits into the scheme of the spectrum of treatments that we have today, um, the technologically sophisticated treatments that we have today that sort of require all of us uh, in the melanoma team to sort of work together hand in hand. Now, of the three basic ways of treating cancer, and particularly melanoma, Radiation therapy seems to be the most mysterious and the most intimidating to patients. Um, the surgical-based uh, therapies of my uh, dermato-oncology um, colleagues, my surgical oncology colleagues, is something very tangible and very familiar to all of us. Um, the drug-based therapies of our uh, medical oncology colleagues are changing you know, as we speak and really have driven a lot of the revolution um, and breakthroughs that have happened in the management of melanoma over the last few years. Radiation therapy um, is actually is one of the oldest ways to treat um, melanomas and any type of skin cancers. Um, the, um, conceptually though, radiation therapy is probably the most similar to surgery um, in that radiation therapy, like surgery, it's a local treatment. Um, my scalpel, when I'm pretending to be a surgeon in the operating room, only goes where I aim it. My radiation beam, likewise, only goes where I aim it, uh, much like a flashlight. Um, but the type of patients that the two treatments um, typically manage are very different. I mean, they're complementary in many ways, and that surgical treatments are, bit, are really focus upon treating the stage one, the stage two patients, the patients whose disease is limited to skin. The um, radiation therapy is tasked, in this group of patients, radiation therapy is tasked to treating actually the few, and actually more than a few very complex patients where the surgical treatments perhaps aren't optimal, um, whether it be in a cosmetically sensitive area like the nose or the ear, or someplace uh, like the skin, like the shin. Uh, that um, might be prone to uh, higher risk of complications following surgery. Um, really, the domain of radiation therapy um, tends to be in the more advanced diseases, stage four. Um, and that's where actually the great, some of the most dramatic advances, again, in the last few years have happened in the um, treatment, um, effective treatment of uh, melanoma patients. But before we sort of go there, the basic question that patients always have when they come in is something that um, I was reminded of at about 2 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday when I was listening to the BBC, um, and that is, why would anyone be crazy enough to use radiation therapy to treat a cancer? Radiation, after all, is something that causes cancer or is guaranteed to uh, do you harm, uh, sort of soften it up. Um, you know, fortunately, the radiation therapy that we use in radiation oncology isn't radioactive. You know, that's, that radioactive hot rock is what they used 100 years ago. Um, radiation therapy, radiation oncology in the modern sense is basically photon therapy. I mean, that, that is what we use. Um, we can aim the photons, uh, we can target the photons, we can control them, um, and photons really are all around us. And in the world of radiation oncology, our therapy, the radiation therapy, really should be called radiant wave treatment because we're using radiant waves of energy. The energy that we're using, it's not kinetic energy. It's not rolling down a hill. It's not electrical energy coming out of the plug, although that powers our machines. Um, it's electromagnetic energy or wave energy, otherwise known as photons in the physics books. Wave energy. Electromagnetic wave energy is all around us. Um, at the low end of the EM spectrum are radio waves that are hundreds of feet apart. Okay? They're not dangerous, they're not harmful. As these waves get closer together, they get more powerful. So as the same wave gets compressed, 
Um, you get into something that's not hundreds of feet apart, but maybe a few inches apart, like a microwave. Um, and then the same waves get compressed even more. They change their character and they become visible light, something that's very dangerous. But it's just beyond that visible spectrum where you do get compressed waves of EM energy that can actually be harmful, the ultraviolet spectrum and the low end of the X-ray spectrum. That that's a part of the EM spectrum that can cause cancer. Um, and this is where my radiology colleagues live. Um, I am not a radiologist. Radiation oncology and radiology are completely different fields. Radiation oncology instead uses electromagnetic radiation, EM waves, photons, that are at the extreme end of the EM spectrum. They are so compressed, they are about the width of the atom. Um, and because of that, when they enter the body, they actually can interact with things like electrons that become atomic bullets, and then literally at the speed of light shoot across and actually break up the strands of DNA, okay? And that traditionally has been the way that we thought of how radiation therapy actually killed cancers. Um, and to generate these high-powered photons, these high-powered machines, uh, sorry, this high-powered energy, we don't use light bulbs, but we use a variation of the light bulb. We use something else that plugs in the continent grid. We use a linear accelerator, okay? And the linear accelerator uh, that's being used more and more across uh, the area throughout the country throughout the world is a very true beam LINEC. Um, and um, the machine that is online um, that uh, was installed a few months ago and within a few weeks is gonna be treating patients here in Broadsville. Um, um, the one that we have our cancer center, it's a true beam LINAC with every single bell and whistle imaginable. It's the most tricked out LINAC, um, I think, anywhere in the NYP system, um, including Columbia. It's certainly uh, the most tricked out machine anywhere in Westchester and the regions just beyond Westchester. Um, and it's important because it's that technology that actually has let us deliver treatments that are, first of all, more safe, Okay, and as we increase the safety index, then we can increase efficacy. So it's always safety first, followed by the efficacy. And the, and the abilities of this machine are far beyond anything that we had before. Now to house a machine like that, NYP um, has built a new cancer center right in the heart of um, Bronxville at a cost of $70 million. And it is the only place where under one roof, under a single roof, you've got the surgeons operating on the top floor. We have our medical oncology colleagues right below them giving their drug therapies or chemotherapies or immunological therapies, and below them you have radiation oncology, literally under one roof. But it's not just the three disciplines that make up a multidisciplinary oncology team. It actually goes way beyond that. It is the geneticists available. It is nutritionists. It is a physical therapist. It's a nursing staff. The whole oncology community in its broadest sense is actually under literally a single roof um, and it offers a convenience, a convenience to the physicians because we can treat patients better, but also having a cancer center in the middle of um, Lower Westchester um, is a convenience community and it's sort of weird to think about Lower Westchester, and by that I mean everything below 287 is sort of um, an underserved population, but it is an underserved population from an oncologic uh, regard because until that cancer center opens in a few weeks, to see all the three disciplines, you either had to have north, north and go along the 287 corridor, or you had to go south and get to the Cross County corridor and below. Um, so finally, when this cancer center opens, we'll be able to service much more effectively the community that many of us live in. And the people who work in this cancer center, you know, many of us went away for training um, and have come back, but many other people have like stayed here their entire lives. And just about everybody in this part of the county has somebody who works in the cancer center that either lives in their neighborhood or has kids in their school or goes to their temple, or goes to their church. Um, so it should be a very familiar um, place to everybody. But does radiation therapy actually work? It definitely does in the modern sense, using the modern machines. Because we've gone from something 
where the older forms of radiation therapy work maybe 50% of the time, up to something that works 95% of the time. Yet, at the same time, we've gotten a treatment that used to cause side effects in, a, in half the patients, severe side effects. Um, but today, 95% of the patients um, who get certain forms of this type of radiation therapy get virtually no side effects. And the most dreaded consequence, I think, of melanoma, uh, for stage four melanoma, are patients when they get, their, get brain metastases. Um, and this slide basically shows sort of the before and after of what's gonna be, what's available in our community here in southern Westchester. The old way of treating radiation therapy for brain metastasis as uh, demonstrated by this black line, by the way, these are not patients, okay? Nothing bad has happened here. Um, just using these images strictly for modeling purposes. Um, but this black line right there represents a brain metastasis in the temporal lobe, someplace, you know, very important for cognitive thinking. Um, some patients can sometimes have multiple lesions. In the past, to treat that, we had to treat the entire brain. We had to give a beam of radiation from the left and a beam of radiation from the right, and the red color wash represents a high-dose area of radiation therapy. Basically, we're treating the entire brain and even giving dose to the eyes. What we, what we, what we can do in the modern era, um, and a lot of people have heard the phrase stereotactic radiosurgery, um, the, um, and a properly tricked out true beam is designed to actually deliver that type of treatment. We can now just basically deliver radiation therapy with surgical precision to just the melanoma, and thereby give the remainder of the brain virtually no dose of radiation therapy and gone from something that is guaranteed to cause hair loss and in older patients, the vast majority will have some cognitive deficits after some time to a treatment where something um, has gone from working 50% of the time to 95% of the time at a minimum and the vast majority of these patients, when they're done with their single treatment, they're gonna go home, they're gonna go out to eat and they're gonna go to work the next day. Um, same sort of thing happens uh, in the spinal cord, in the spine, another common place for metastases for melanoma. In the past, when we had, a mel when we had metastasis to uh, the vertebral body surrounding the spine, um, we gave a beam of radiation from the front, a beam of radiation from the back, and therefore the spinal cord got full doses of radiation, as did the heart, as did the lung, as did the liver, as did everything in the path of the beam. This treatment only worked about half the time. Today, or actually in a few weeks, um, we'll be able to deliver radiation therapy stereotactically in just a handful of treatments, target just the bone that we need to, give the spinal cord virtually no radiation dose, and certainly give the heart, the lung, and everything else um, a trivial amount of radiation dose. And, and uh, again, a treatment that's gonna work 95% of the time, and where 95 of the patients are gonna have nominal, if any, side effects. And the odds of radiation therapy like this, or even this, causing a malignancy is a fraction of 1%. Um, the, um, but what about the disease that we can't treat, okay? Because metastases often are just one or two. They can be throughout the body, as demonstrated by this bone scan of a melanoma patient who has disease throughout, his, uh, throughout the spine and in multiple uh, bones of uh, the ribs and in the pelvis. Um, <clears throat> are the effects of radiation therapy simply just to kill the tumor? Or can they actually cause things far beyond the realm of the tumor? So in this patient, this patient just got some radiation therapy to one of these vertebral bodies, and years later, the patient still um, has, is basically free of disease, remains free of disease. Um, this is two or three years later, and all the patient got was some radiation therapy dose just to the vertebral body. Um, now, it's taken a long time for people to sort of understand what happened, and the first person ever coined, coined the term, um, the person who first described it, um, uh, or coined the term to describe it, the abscopal effect, uh, was back in 1953, naturally, by Dr. Bowl. Um, the, um, uh, it's taken 60 years of research to figure out that it wasn't an accident, it wasn't some type of spontaneous regression, um, but that's what people thought for decades. What changed was that was when medical oncology and radiation oncology and 
dermato-oncology and our surgical oncology colleagues finally got together, worked as a team, collaborated very hard to, when, to realize that not only does radiation therapy just kill cancer cells, but it's actually one of the most potent, potent stimulators of the immune system. Um, so that the immune system can treat disease that's far beyond the ability of radiation therapy to reach. And it's, the, it's in the domain of our medical oncology colleagues to be able to harness the power of the immune system, to augment the power of the immune system, through their uh, little breakthrough, their landmark treatments that they developed over the last uh, several years to be used either alone um, or in combination with various forms of radiation therapy and other forms of local therapy. And so with that, I'll sort of hand it off uh, uh, to my medical oncology colleagues. Um, um, and just uh, very quickly, just like to acknowledge um, uh, Rich and Yvonne, who are here, and uh, their chairman in uh, medical oncology, uh, Gary Schwartz, um, Dr. Geskin, and uh, her uh, colleague in surgical uh, oncology, Brett Tabak, my radiation oncology colleagues back at Columbia, and of course, uh, Dr. Killikey and uh, uh, Jean, um, who uh, help, who provide some of the leadership and help uh, get us organized together today. Thanks a lot.